Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, we're going to do another video today about power generation with the arming sword or the single-handed sword. So I did a video uh, a few days ago, uh, five uh, power generators. Uh, today we're going to talk about seven. I got, I got a bonus for you guys. I got two additional power generators for us to talk about. Um, now today, the focus of today's video uh, is going to be um, drilling these power generators on the Pell uh, and actually using them in the fight, okay? Uh, so so these are things that we're going to be talking about today. So um, we're going to start off with the hip rotation, okay? Um, I'll just for a second. So uh, hip rotation is the most common. Uh, it's where people usually start. Uh, so I'm going to kind of go through this quickly, but the idea here is as far as uh, drilling it on the Pell, right? There's four quadrants, okay? We've got four quadrants here. One, two, three, four. And what I want to do is I want to be able to hit any one of those four quadrants uh, with the shot, okay? So basically I'm rotating my hip there, rotating my hip there, okay? Rotating my hip there, rotating my hip there. Now, on the off side, right, the other side, uh, there's two ways that I can get there, right? Uh, so one will be moving my hip forward and punching the shot out, right? Okay. And the other one is pulling back, okay? Okay, so that's the other way I can generate. So this is all coming from the hip, um, and from there you can work the combinations, right? You want to be able to hit, you know, any quadrant. You know, you want to be able to go from any one of these quadrants to any one of the other quadrants, okay? So, uh, and you can do this by starting, let's say, from here, right? From here, boom, hip there, right? Bam. So no matter where you start, which one of the four quadrants you start in, you want to be able to get to one of the other four quadrants. So this is probably not something that you guys are um, hearing for the first time. This video is uh, uh, intended more for... You know, intermediate fighters, you know, you know, not brand new fighters. Now, if you're a brand new fighter, that's fine. You know, you can still follow, you know, this should, this is, this part of it is something that you can make use of immediately. And then, uh, you know, even if you're not using some of the other stuff right now, you know, you'll listen to the ideas, uh, you'll absorb them. And later on, at some point, you'll be able to use them as well. Okay. So, um, now, this concept of being able to start in any one of the four quadrants, right, use your hip and get to any one of the other four quadrants, uh, is something that we're going to try and apply to all the other power generators, okay? So that's why I started with this hip rotation as the primary, uh, because this is the one that's going to be familiar to most people. So now we're going to take this concept and we're going to try to apply it to all the other power generators. Okay, so the next one on my list okay is the step momentum okay where we're stepping into the shot okay so we're stepping there okay stepping there okay stepping there okay stepping there okay so we're stepping into obviously do this on something other than loose gravel so you're not sliding um so we're stepping okay stepping stepping okay stepping okay so this is a good way to introduce movement into your fighting okay um because a lot of times when with new fighters they tend to be very stationary okay and now all of a sudden if you if you if you start working with this uh with, with throwing these stepping cuts uh and especially like if you go to a couple practices and to, to a couple practices and you say hey for the next three practices i'm going to be focusing on this and i want all my shots to include some type of a stepping cut you know now you're going to start adding that into your fighting okay and now you're going to start being more mobile and as you become more mobile you're you know you become a much better fighter basically so once you've got these two things down and you've drilled them and you practice them now you can start combining these two things okay so we're going to combine let's say here we got step right you got step with hip okay so what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm doing a stepping cut, right? And as I'm doing this, I'm going out to the side. Then as I come here, now I'm throwing hip, right? So I'm throwing hip, okay? So same deal here. You want to you wanna be able to get to any of the quadrants, any of the quadrants 
uh, using a combination of these two methods. Okay? So I might be hit over here, I'm stepping cut there, right? Stepping cut there, then as I come here, I'm throwing hip into that shot. Okay? So what this does is in addition to uh, giving your shots variety, it also changes the tempo, okay? So because if I do a stepping cut, you know, that comes in at a different speed than if I do a hip cut, okay? So, and you can even double these up on the same side, okay? Uh, so, so here we got step cut and then hip, okay? Um, so that's definitely something that you should uh, uh, also drill because a lot of times people are, you know, you got your four quadrants and people are like, okay, we're going to go from this quadrant to that quadrant, from that quadrant to that quadrant. Uh, but don't forget to also double up on a single quadrant, okay? Because that's also variation, right? Especially if people aren't expecting you to throw a double leg, okay? So here's an example where I threw the first shot uh, into the shield, right? And I can do that at a stepping cut, stepping cut into the shield, and then take, or rather, let's do this in reverse. It'll probably work better. Let's do hip, right? Hip into the, into the shield, and then stepping cut around to the leg, okay? So that's gonna, this first cup with the hip here, right? So I'm throwing a hip cut, right? And I throw that hip cut into the shield. The person's gonna bring their shield down. They, that, they're gonna block this leg. They're almost freezing themselves a little bit. So you got hip, step, and then you've got leg over there, okay? So, so, so hip, step with the leg. So, we, so we, we're, and it's the same. So here's the thing. In essence, it's, in a way, it's the same cut but it's not the same cut, right? Because I'm throwing to the same area, the sword is basically traveling through the same line, okay? But because I've changed the power generation, it's now a different shot, okay? So so, so a lot of times when I, when I first started fighting, um, people would say, vary your shots more. You know, they're too predictable, okay? And, and when I first started fighting, I was like, or even when I was even at the intermediate level, I'm like, well, there's only really four quadrants and there's only so many combinations I can throw to those four quadrants. So like how much more can I vary the shots? And then at some point I came to realize that uh, just by changing the power generation, uh, you can, you know, you, you can change the shot itself. Okay. So we got hip, step, boom. Now we got, we got to the leg. What I'm doing here is I'm following, you know, so into the, into the shield, step and then i'm following that line down into the leg so when you practice this try to get something that resembles a shield uh to practice against it doesn't have to be an actual shield you can get like a piece of plywood an old piece of plywood whatever you know uh, a rubber mat you know just you know a big piece of plastic uh cut up a barrel or something and put something here that resembles a shield the type of shield that you are likely to be fighting uh, so that you can practice throwing these shots. So with all these shots, what you want to try and do is match your cuts to the angles. Okay, so, so these are the angles. And there's lots of different types of shields out there. But over here, I've got a heater shield, a very common type of shield. So what I want to do is match my angle, right? So this is a hip rotation cut, right, with the hip. So you see how I'm matching that angle, matching the angle there, right? Uh, or vertical, right? See, how I'm throwing a vertical shot here. I'm matching the angle right there, okay? Or this over here, I've got this curve over here, right? So again, with the hip, I'm matching the angle coming down in the curve, right? Right? Curve, right? So I'm matching the angles of the shield. The, the hardest uh, shot for beginners to usually throw uh, is, is this high horizontal shot. Uh, because you, basically the basket has to come up, okay? So one of the ways that I've heard it put is you're taking your pingy and you're shoving it up the guy's nose, okay? So you're coming up and you're, you're shoving that pinky up the guy's nose to get that, to get that angle, um, you know, to match the shield, okay? Uh, let me get a buckler for a second. Hold on, right back. Okay, so one of the things that you can do is get yourself a small shield or buckler. I just basically cut this out of a piece of uh, out of a, a, a piece of plastic uh, for your drilling. Okay, so for the purpose of the drilling, 
I want to have something over here that's light and small so I can practice making these shots, right? So let's throw that leg shot, up. boom, boom, okay? And, and practice having my, my guard up or blocking as I'm throwing these shots. Now, you can do this with the regular shield, right? Um, regular shield on. So the, the issue with the, if you use your regular shield, especially if you have a larger shield like this, uh, is that it does get tiring, okay? So it does kind of limit how long you can do it. Now, when you're fighting, okay, what's happening is your adrenaline is up, right? So you got adrenaline, uh, you got extra sugar pumping through your body, um, so you don't get tired as as fast, okay? So, but if you're if you if you if you're practicing on the pel, uh, what happens is because your adrenaline is not going to be as high up, uh, you know. I, I, I like to practice with a smaller shield. So, so this kind of um, uh, makes up for the fact that you're not actually fighting and your drone is not up. So I, a good way to get around this is to just use a smaller shield so that the other hand uh, can practice being in that position, okay? So boom, shot, right? So same thing here, hit, shot. And, and I'm practicing holding that shield in, in that position. So. As you go, let's say, from one power generation method to another power generation method, like all of a sudden it's like what was pretty simple when you were pelt, when you were pelt drilling and everything was just hip rotation um, or everything is just step, uh, step, you know, momentum, making a stepping cut. Once you start com making combinations, uh, all of a sudden, you know, your, you know your, your brain starts working at a whole different level. Okay? So that's just two methods. Now let's add the third method of power generation, uh, which is the Moline, right? Or, or the rotational cut. And I talked about this yesterday. This is where elbow comes high up, and I'm using these lat muscles over here to basically to, to create the power, okay? So boom, boom. So um, with this, from this cut here, I can get to all four quadrants, okay? So I can go there, right? I can go there, I can go there, okay? I can go there, okay? So, I, so again, this is following that idea that we talked about is with all these different power generators, I want to be able to hit all four different quadrants. I'm going to just put the shield down now because I want you guys to be able to, to see because I, I realize the shield is blocking a lot of the, of the, of the target here. So, so once, you, once you get comfortable with being able to get to all four different quadrants, right? with that Molnay shot. Again, this is using power from here. There's no hip rotation. There's no step here. Then you can start mixing things, okay? So now, you know, we can go basically, you know, basically over the top with the Molnay, right? And then boom, right? So hit there, I'm throwing hip, okay? So Molnay, hip cut there, right? Or we can do Molnay, step, okay? So you can start mixing and matching uh, different things here. Uh, the next one on this list, uh, hand leverage, right? Where we're, um, where I'm closing these hands to create leverage in the sword. Now, there's two ways to do it, right? Because a lot of people will put a trigger on oh, to get a different sword. So here I've got a rapier, right? That has a fingering section here or a fingering ring. So I can also use this finger. Uh, I can use a trigger method to also create that leverage, okay? So, um, let me put this down just so that I'm not beating this up again. So, so, using that method now, just the hand leverage, okay, we're basically gonna practice hitting all four different quadrants. Obviously, this is not hitting as hard, okay? Uh, but what's gonna happen is once we've developed this method, later on, we're gonna combine it with other things, okay? so. Uh, so this tends to be a, uh, uh, you know, it, it just a tends to add a little extra pop to the shots I make, okay? Um, so practice this, get used to it, okay? 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 Uh, and then we, uh, and then we can start, we can start adding other things with it. So, so we, we basically we can, because now I'm doing hip rotation, but now I'm adding a little bit of pop there. Right, so you can see how, boom, okay, the second shot was harder, 
because on the second shot, I also closed my hand. <laughs> so this is something that, especially as you're fighting and you start getting tired, right, um, you can start pulling from different places, right? So, you know, initially maybe, you know, the step is enough, right? So here I'm stepping to make that cut. But as I start getting tired, now I'm going to add some of this, okay? Okay, so there on that second one, which was harder, right? So right here I'm just, I'm just stepping, okay? Now I'm going to also close the hand, okay? All right. So I'm adding this to kind of finish the shot off uh, and, and add that uh, extra little pop, okay? Um, so again, practice hitting all four different quadrants so you can get everywhere. And then later on you'll decide when and where you can use it. Now I added a section. Uh, I mean, there's, there's advantages and disadvantages to everything uh, that you do. Okay, so if you're, if you're doing a lot of this, what's going to happen is um, if somebody throws a shot into your hand while, you do, we're, while, you know, while you're about to do this, that can destabilize the sword out of your hand. Uh, so if I'm fighting against somebody that likes to do a lot of punch blocking, either with their shield or with the sword, right? Because you can have somebody, right? And sometimes I'll lose too. As soon as I see a shot initiate, boom, you right? I'm, I'm thrown into their sword uh, to destabilize it. Okay, so if you, so uh, yeah, that would be a reason why you may not always want to do that, right? Because it adds that little extra pop. But if you got somebody that's constantly punching into your sword with either their shield or their weapon, it can be a little destabilizing. So, so we pick and choose what we're going to use when we're going to use it okay uh, but we want to have options all right so that's why we're going to we're going to drill all these different things on the pel hitting all four different quadrants uh and then later on right, and then we can start putting together combinations right so uh you know we can start putting together different combinations now here, here's one of the things i actually want to talk to you guys about the video because okay so when we're drilling this on the pel we're like okay here i'm using hip Okay, here I'm using step, right? Here I'm, I'm using some of, you know, using my hand. Um, how about during the course of a fight, okay? So during the course of the fight, I, in my mind, I'm not thinking of, for this shot, I'm throwing hip. For this shot, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm closing my hand. For the other shot, I'm stepping in. Um, during the course of the fight, what I'm usually thinking of is uh, what I want to accomplish, the effect. So. And especially if I'm out of range or at the edge of my range, okay, it makes sense that I'm going to make a stepping cut, okay? You know, make it, you know, if I'm way out here, it makes sense that I'm going to make a stepping cut to get to where I want to go, okay? So, so during the course of the fight, I'm not thinking of I want to pull power from here or pull power from there or pull power from the other place. I'm thinking what is the effect that I want, and because I've drilled this on the pelt, you know, I, I just, I know what I need to do to, to get the results that I want, okay? So, uh, just as an example, so we're out of range, at the edge of the range, I throw a stepping cut, okay? You know, he blocks it, we close in, right? So now we're here, so now I'm thinking, okay, now I'm throwing hip, or now I'm stepping to the side. So I'm, 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 I'm thinking about the effect rather than I'm drawing power from here, drawing power from there, drawing power from the other place, okay? Um, so now next one, let's talk about arm. Okay, this is where we're arming the shot. Okay, so for all of these, so, so when we're arming the shot, right, it's basically like we're punching, okay? So it's no punching this way, punching that way, punching vertical, okay? So, you know, punch this way, punch that way, punch vertical. So these are, it's, just, it's just a punching shot. Now I call it arm, but in reality, it's not just arm, and, and none of these shots really work just in isolation uh it's it's just a question of you're pulling more power from here versus more power from the other place but from all of these shots to some extent they you know they kind of pull power from other parts of your body so with the punching shot i'm, I'm basically tightening my legs tightening my core tightening my, my stomach muscles right and i'm just punching the shot so most of the power is coming from my shoulder and, and tricep as i'm punching the shot okay my bicep is what's bringing the shot in um if you do a lot of that it gets really tiring, okay? So uh, it's very fast, right? Because you're punching these shots out. It's a very fast shot, but it can get very tiring. Uh, and also, if that's the only thing that you do, people will time it, okay? Shot, boom, 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 boom,
boom, boom, boom, boom, okay? So I'm making these really fast shots, okay? Um, you, using this now, the, if you're only doing that, what happens is people will time the shots. Um, people can stuff the shots by throwing into the into the sword. So if you're doing any one of these, uh, these power generators, exclusively one and not any of the others, uh, people will figure out how to time your shots. Uh, and what they'll do is, I mean, a good way, if I got somebody that's throwing a really fast shot, you know, as soon as they initiate that motion, you can just step back a little bit. And, you know, because they're not using the step or they're not using any of the other things, just by stepping back about six inches or even just leaning back, um, it, it, it makes that shot a lot less effective. Okay? So that's why I want to pull from all of these. Okay? So that was arming the shot, same deal. Practice arming the shot to all four quadrants. You know, have, have some type of a shield in front of you, okay? So you're practicing, you know, going around your shield, right? Okay? All right, so, so have, so practice with, 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 again, doesn't have to be a full size shield, but it does have to be something to make sure that this stays in front of you. Because the natural tendency is that as this arm comes forward, this arm wants to come back, okay? So by keeping this in front of you, especially if it's a center grip that you hold way out, you know, you're going to see that that's staying in front of you. And um, the motion, a lot of people just don't realize it, but, because remember, as this arm comes forward, this arm naturally wants to come back. So the motion is really both arms come forward, okay? It's, I'm exaggerating here, but as this arm comes forward, this arm is also coming forward, right? So boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, okay? That's how I'm able to extend this arm, right? And then this arm basically keep up with it. Both arms are coming forward. So it's, they're, they're meeting. Wherever you're going, the two arms are meeting, okay? When you're fighting with the, you know, with a sword and shield, okay? Um, so that's that's something, so I'll do it this way so you can see it. So if, this, if I'm blocking with this arm, all right? So I'm here, basically this arm moves slightly forward and the two meet, okay? Um, HEMA buckler fighters are really good at doing this, right? This is, that's like one of the things that they practice. They're very big on, you know, when they, when they cut, you know, they need to cover their hand, right? Because their hands are a target area. So how do you cover your hand, right? You have to punch out with the sword, as, you know, with the buckler as you're punching out. So the same thing's happening with the shield. Um, you know, you got to extend it just a little bit, doesn't have to be a lot, so that it stays in front of you. So that's how I'm able to cut, right? And then the shield stays in front of my body, right? Because I'm actually punching it out uh, just a little bit. Same thing's happening here with the, larger, with the larger shield, okay? As I'm cutting, this comes out just a little bit to close those angles, okay? Okay? So let's see how it just pulls out a little bit. All right, so that's arm punch. So now we're gonna talk about two additional power generators that we didn't talk about last time. So we talked about hip rotation, step momentum, uh, uh, the Molnay or the rotational cuts, um, the hand leverage, right, where you're closing your hand, punching. now. In all these shots, we'll, we'll get, get, get the other two in a second, but in all these shots, uh, and it's really emphasized with punching, regardless what the shot is or which generator I'm using, the sword stays in front of my face. Okay, let me. So the sword is also part of my defense, okay? So as I'm throwing the shot, so if I'm throwing hip shots, right, right, if I'm throwing hip shots, this basket is coming straight to you. So it doesn't matter if I'm throwing hip shots, my hand is right in front of me. I'm not making a large swinging motion. It's just like if, you, if we're gonna fight, right? If somebody's making this large sweeping cut, I mean, you just block it right there, right? So a, a straight cut is faster, it's more direct. It, it, it sends the power just in one generation. So with all of these cuts, regardless of how I'm generating the power, whether it's hip, hip, right? The, 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 the basket, right, or the, the handle, it stays right in front of me, uh, or the cross guard, right? This cross guard here is part of my defense, right? 
so that stays in front of me okay if i'm using the step method same thing i'm stepping stepping right this cross guard stays in front of me the, the tip is making the arc but my hand is right in front of me there's no there's, there's none of this okay it's this hand stays directly in front of me uh where's the other one uh Molnay cut. Okay, so with the Molnay cut, obviously the basket starts from up here, right? Elbow comes up. I'm tightening the lats here. But what's happening is, look, look where this cross guard is, right? I'm here, and boom, right? It, it, it's staying in the center. Boom, goes to the leg. Boom, goes to the other leg. Okay, so this basket here, okay, stays. In front. Now, it's not like it should never. You know, because in some scenarios, yeah, you, you know, maybe you, you will cut out here. But as far as drilling it, mastering it, learn to throw the shot with the cross guard or the basket, you know, right in front of you. And then later on, you can also do other things. But learn to fight with this thing, you know, guarding you, right? Because this section now is also part of my defense as I'm throwing the shot. Uh, what else we got? Uh, hand leverage, same thing. With the hand leverage, if I'm doing this, same thing. That this cross guard, this basket, whatever I got there, that's staying right in front of me. Boom, right, right there. I'm, I'm basically doing this now with my hand. That stays in front of me. Okay. And what's next? Arm. Oh, we already talked about punching. So I'm punching the shots right now. I'm, you know, I'm fisting this. All right. Same thing. Cross guard stays in front of me as I'm making those cuts. Okay. So let's get to the other two, the bonus ones. All right. Down. All right, so this is the new one we're going to talk about this time. The sword momentum. Okay, what on earth is that? <laughs> now, by the way, these are kind of like names I made up. Um, there's lots of different people out there that use these shots. They may call them by a slightly different name, and that's fine. Okay, uh, I just, you know, I just call it by whatever I think will be easiest for me to remember. Okay, so... Sword momentum, okay, is a shot where the sword basically has momentum. Now, let me get one that's a little prettier. All right, so uh, a most basic one is like, let's say if I have the sword here, and I'm using, I'm using the, the, the gravity to make the cut, right? Okay. So I'm using the sword's momentum. Okay? Now, if, I mean, obviously, if I stand here and I make a large diagonal cut like this, other person's gonna see it. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna block it because they can see it coming. Um, but I, I just wanted to illustrate the the, the, the concept. Um, so first, do practice hitting all four quadrants of this. Okay. So this is like George Silver, right? So you see George Silver standing in these high guards here. So you're cutting to that quadrant, cutting to that quadrant, cutting to that quadrant, cutting to that quadrant. Okay. So easy enough. Won't take you long to learn those things. Um, one of the places that I will sometimes use this is right here okay so from there let me get a shield okay so to get to right there boom okay so this is a shot that you will see you may never see people doing that right up to the head but you will see people doing this right that you will see okay All right and then you can combine this with the other with the other uh you know, one of the other power generations okay so you're here, you make this large cut here, and then from there, boom, right? So, so I went from using the sword's momentum, right? I'm using gravity to help me here. Make that cut here, pull back, and now I'm using my hip. Boom, okay? So I can also, boom, do that with the step, okay? So, uh, so that's something that you should be aware of. Now, one, another way that I will use sword momentum, again, this is the sword picking up power, is a lot of times with the... Um, you know, I'll throw a cut there and boom. Okay. So this, so from here, how do I make a, a back edge cut to the leg, right? Because what am I, I mean, I'm really not throwing hip into it. I'm not stepping into it. I'm really using the sword's momentum, right? So I make a cut here, right? And I might do that with a step, right? So I'm here, I get there. Now from there, boom, okay? I'm using the sword's momentum, okay? I'm not, you know, I mean, I'm, obviously I'm using a little bit of arm, but if I were to start from here, right? If I was to start from here and try to do that, that's that's not gonna hit hard enough. 
So what's really making the shot work is that this sword is traveling through this big arc, picking up speed as it goes, and then it lands, okay? So, so we're gonna use a step, and then boom, through right there. So I'm using this large arc. So uh, another, other ways that you can use this um, is, you know, basically, um, sometimes you'll see people go boom, right? Boom, bring the sword around, boom, right? So when you see these, these, these large rotational cuts, uh, again, by itself, people can see it coming mile, a mile away. Uh, but if you mix it into your other generators, people are like, what on earth is this guy doing? So people normally don't expect me, right, to do this type of a cut, right? Where I'm making this large sweeping cut. Uh, I mean, there's other, like normally to get to that side there, I'll do a Molinate cut like that. Right, that's how I normally get to that side over there. So if I, you know, decide to be cute, right, and now all of a sudden, you know, like let's say I'll throw a probing shot, right, so I'll, I'll, let's say I do a step, okay, from there do this large sweeping cut, people are going to say, well, what the hell is he doing? That's an easy block. Boom. That's where the next shot goes, okay. So a lot of these shots, they can be distractions, okay. So um, even though this looks weird, it looks kind of weird to stand here, and make this big diagonal cut. Boom, okay? That's a setup for a different shot, okay? So a, a lot of these power generators, um, you know, you know, like I've said it before, they change the tempo, they change your speed. Uh, because if you're always throwing fast shots, right, from, a, from, from you know, you're here and you're just punching these shots out and making these really fast shots, people are going to learn fast. Okay, this guy swings at this speed, okay? Uh, but if you start doing some of the other stuff, people start seeing different speeds. It, it, it you know, it, it makes the fight a, a lot less predictable, okay? Uh, hey, everyone, I wanted to cut in with uh, one more momentum shot that I often throw, okay? So again, this is a shot where the sword has a momentum. So the, the shot looks like this. Okay, so I'm standing here fighting. Right, let me, let me get okay. So basically I start on this side, right? Sword comes here, and then from here it flips up and then it gets goes into the armpit. Okay, so this is what it's gonna look like. So all the, the speed is being generated from back here, right? So I'm throwing this out. So it's coming up, it has momentum now, right? And then what I'm doing is I'm flipping it over, right? And then and then what's happening is it flips over and the tip tip comes into the armpit. Um and what I will what I will do to add to it is I'll I'll do a little bit of the hand closing, okay? And then what I'll also do is I'll I'll also turn my hips a little bit, but those kind of add extra power. The bulk of the power, the main power generator, is is from the sword picking up speed from back here. Okay, so so, so the basket's moving from back here. Okay, from so here, sword comes up here, right, and it goes it goes into that armpit. Okay, uh, if I try to do this without momentum, right? So if I try to do this slow, okay, there's no power there. Now, there's other ways I can make this shot, okay? So I can do this shot with just hip rotation because what I can do is I can bring my basket over over here on this side and then turn my hips back this way, okay? All right, so, so there's other ways I can get to that armpit. Um, the disadvantage, right, is that basket has to come all the way over, right, right? And I'm opening up my head on this side over here as it as it comes over right and i can make that shot so by using the momentum right um of the sword from that i build up from this side what that means is i don't have to bring my arm all the way over to make that shot i can just come in up to here right right so i'm not coming all the way over here just bringing it up up to here and then and then just just turning it down so let me, let me do that shot again okay so i'm here building up speed here Boom, and it goes in, it goes into the armpit right there. Okay, so that's a momentum shot. Okay. So, um, so yeah, that's one of the bonus shots. That's uh, so. Lastly, let's talk about. All right, so these are the two bonus ones. We talked about the sword momentum. 
Uh, now we're going to talk about the, the, the point of balance rotation. Okay, point of balance. So with all these swords, right, they've all got a balance point. I talked about this in the last video. This thing's getting hot. The sun's baking this thing. So that's about the, the balance point of this. That's where the sword wants to rotate, okay? okay? It takes, now here's the thing. The, with the thing with this rotation is, um, it's, it, this is a lever, right? So there's a, a small amount of movement that's happening on this hand that's creating a lot of movement on that hand, on that side, right? Right, so that's creating, right? So that, I'm, I'm rotating it on that balance point. Now, with a, the simulator for this type 14 sword is this sword I have built here. So both these swords weigh about the same. Something like two pounds, 14 ounces. They both balance about there. Yeah, about there so this allows me to do the same thing right I can rotate on that point of balance and make and make those rotational cuts okay now if you have a different type of sword and I talked about this one last time this sword is really great for fighting on horseback right because it's long it's blade heavy uh, the balance point while wow, this thing's getting hot is somewhere out here okay so with this one, because it's further out, this hand makes a much, you know, there's a lot more movement on my hand on this side, okay? So that's just one of the things that you have to be aware of. With this sword, right, you see how I got to move, I got to put a little bit of body into this in order to make those rotational cuts, okay? Because now I'm able to rotate this a lot more comfortably. When I'm just trying to do this with my hand, not so comfortable, right? Uh, whereas with this type of sword, because the, the balance point is a little bit closer, you know, I can I can turn this with my hand, and then if I throw body into this, it becomes even easier, right? Okay. So with this type of sword, because it's more blade heavy, longer, you know, I have to get more body into this. Okay. So and this is the next size that you can do with your sword. You know, what is the easiest way for you to move this sword around that 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 balance point? So learn what the what the balance point is. So like I said, this this type of sword here resembles fighting with uh, uh, a simulator like this uh, where you got this is uh, uh, this is I think like an inch and a inch and a half maybe of uh, thick wood okay so this is much more blade heavy okay so again with this I gotta figure out what that what that balance point is okay so with these like I said like I said in the, in the last video these these type of swords are great for fighting from horseback okay because if you're fighting on horseback and you're using the momentum of the horse, right, this has a lot of, you know, you know, you know, this sword just wants to go. So as you're riding along, boom, you make a horizontal cut there, or boom, you cut down to the ground. Um, in fact, even if I'm, let's say I'm fighting on horseback like this, right, right, yeah, I can even reach this side here because I got a longer sword. So if I'm, if I'm riding along on the horse, and I got somebody on my other side, you know, boom, you know, I, I got enough reach, right, where I can ride by and make a cut, you know, or at least, you know, double up on my block because I got more reach, okay? With this slightly shorter rod, okay, you know, it's just, it's just shorter. I have to reach down more. So, again, that's a reason why that Pike X was so popular around, uh, for knights. It's really good for using from, for, uh, from horseback, okay? So... Back to the rotational cuts. Okay. So again, press sit in front of your pal, right? And just using that rotation, practice, you know, getting to all four quadrants. Okay. Now, um, from here, I'm, I'm starting off from this position here, right? So that's going to favor going to the to, to, to the right side or to the on side, right? It's going to favor it's going to favor rotating from there to there, but you know, once I get to this side, well, I can also rotate back the other way, okay? So, you know, I can start off there, and now it's an easy rotation there. So right now, I'm just using my, my hands, right? Okay. So that's a good place to just, that's a good way to just learn the balance point. Uh, and during the course of the fight, we're also going to pull from the other power generators, because this by itself, okay, is you know where I'm just using my 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 um my wrist basically to turn it my hand turns back and forth 
unless I'm stri striking somebody on the fingers in unarmored combat, that's probably not going to be a good shot. But if I combine that, say if I'm here, right, if I combine that with a little hip rotation, right, you know, or a step, okay, um, I can now start building up some power and I can generate uh, sufficient force, okay. Now, by the way, one of the muscles that this uses is actually your bicep. Uh, people don't realize that one of the one of the jobs of the bicep is actually to rotate your hand back and forth. Okay, so 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 this it, this uses the forearm muscles and it also uses your biceps. Uh, the biceps are a small muscle. Okay, so it gets very tiring very fast. Okay, uh, if you don't you if you don't um, uh, get the assistance of other power generators. Okay, so the one I often use is the Malne with a high elbow here. So, you know, using this in combination with maybe even a little hip rotation, I can get a really fast shot. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so, so we can drill these things in isolation. Uh, and then, you know, initially, right, then we can start drilling different combination of these things. Okay, and in, during the course of the fight, uh, we're, we're not going to be, hey, I'm drawing power from here, drawing power from there. It's going to be like, hey, I'm out of range, right? What do I need to get into range? Okay, I need to step, okay? I'm here, okay, get some hip now to, you know, to, to bring the shot in and get on, you know, and, and get past this angle over here, okay? Um, so in fighting, we're just thinking about, um, you know, what are the results that we want, uh, but in order to get to that point, you have to kind of drill these things in isolation, start mixing and matching, you know, and then, and then eventually you'll be able to just, you know, in the course of a fight, you're going to say, hey, I want to do this, this, that, and it just happens, okay? Um, one other thing worth mentioning, okay, uh, melees versus single combat. Uh, in melees, where we're typically fighting, a, yeah, I got one group of guys fighting against another group of guys, okay? Uh, what I, more often than not, what I tend to use is just hip rotation, okay? The reason why I'm using just hip rotation uh, is number one, like during the melee, you generally have to hit people a little bit harder. And the reason is not because they're, uh, you know, they're, they're blowing off shots, but because in the melee, there's there's lots of noise. Um, there's being bumped left and right from, you know, by their own teammates. Um, so, so what I find is I need to hit them a little bit harder so that they will recognize that they've actually been hit and not think that they've just been bumped by one of their teammates. Okay, so so because. I have to hit people a little bit harder. Uh, I, I tend to stick with the hip rotation. Okay, so that's one of the important things to know because uh, you, you, you know you, you got to use the right things in the right place, right? Right tool for the right job, right? So in a melee, um, I'm I'm primarily using hip. Okay, I might come over the top. Okay, I'm usually throwing my shots to the on side, right? To 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 the sword side, right? Uh, not so much going to the off side. Uh, because for one thing, if I'm reaching over to this side, I'm leaving myself open to that guy that's over there. Because remember, you're finding a whole line of people. So usually in, in the melee, right, you know, whereas if, I'm, if we're fighting single, the, sword, the shield can be a little bit off to the side, right? In the melee, the shield tends to be more directly in front of you, right? Uh, because I also got a block against that guy that's diagonally over there. So that tends to favor throwing most of my shots here. Because remember, I'm not just throwing shots to the guy here. I'm also throwing shots to the guy over there that's diagonal. So I've got, I got plenty of stuff to hit here without trying to worry too much about hitting stuff on this side over there. Um, so I, it's usually mostly hip, okay? And the sword's usually starting from someplace back here, right? Again, because I need to generate more power, okay? So um, I, I just wanted to throw that, that little thing out there as, as far as melees versus singles. Uh, because if you try to use some of this stuff in a melee, you might find that, hey, it's, it's not working so great. You're not hitting hard enough. Remember, in the melee, there's lots of pushing, lots of shoving, right? Uh, so, so, you know, a, a lot of this, uh, a lot of these other shots can kind of be lost uh, in that mix. Uh, because, again, the, the shots have to be a little bit harder. I will generally use a slightly heavier sword than what I use to fight in, uh, uh, in singles, okay? Now, sometimes... I just got one sword and I gotta make it work, okay? So again, because I just got one sword, right? Let's say a, 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 a tournament sword, and that's what I'm fighting with, I need to make sure I'm throwing from the hip to make sure that those, those shots land. And using combinations, throwing from the hip, maybe 
you know, using a little bit of the hand over here uh, to, to add that little extra pop. Um, so I think there's a whole bunch of stuff for you guys to, to think about there. So let's do a quick review. All right, we talked about the hip rotation, right? Step momentum where you're stepping into the shots. The Molinay cuts with the elbow high, driving down with the lat, okay? Hand leverage where you're closing your hand, either with these hands here or if you've got a trigger, using the, 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 the trigger finger to, to pull on that to create, basically creating leverage in your hand, okay? Uh, arming the shots where you're just punching them out, okay? Then sword momentum where basically you're, you're moving the sword through a large arc, okay? Um, it doesn't matter from which direction it's going through. In fact, you know, um, a lot of times you'll see people in like a weird position, like something like this, right? Right? And they throw a shot and it's good, right? Um, so, so here, here's a shot. Like I'm up in the air, I'm off balance, right? Okay. I can still generate a, a reasonably good, good hit because the sword is traveling from here all the way to there, even though even though I'm on one foot and obviously I'm not using any of the other power generators. Simply because the sword is making that large arc, um, it, 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 it has the ability to make a good hit. Not that it'll always be a good hit, but it has the ability to make a good hit. Uh, and then the last one was the, the point of balance, okay? Point of balance where, you know, you, you know your sword's balance point here, and you're using that to kind of whip the sword, okay? Go from here to there, right? right? Come here, and then boom, on the balance point to get to the other side. But that, that tip is really whipping around that balance point. So uh, just as an illustration, so... If I'm from this position here, right, if I'm making a cut, you can see that the whole sword is traveling through the air, okay, All right, so that's more of a straight cut, okay, versus from here, boom, and here I'm whipping on around that balance point, okay? and it gives it a lot of velocity because, you know, I'm pushing, I'm pushing on the lever here, which is moving that tip a lot on the other, end, other hand, versus with this, the, the tip is only going a little bit faster than my hand, okay, in that cut, versus here, the tip is going a lot faster than my hand, right? So, uh, a bunch of things for you guys to think about. Uh, let me know if you got any questions, comments, anything additional to add. I'd love to hear from you guys, uh, and I'll talk to you all soon.